and was asked to fill in. I said, well, what scripture would I be preaching from? Because on Friday night, they have seven preachers, 10 minutes each, preaching about the last seven things that Jesus said. And in order for me to know what, in order for me to do my job adequately, I needed to know what I was preaching about. And they said, well, you're going to do I first. I said, okay. And I started to chuckle, and all the preachers started looking. He said, oh, no. Okay. I said, I'm not, I've already got a, an idea in my mind. All right. The Lord already dropped it in my spirit. Yeah. If I'm going to talk about Jesus saying, I thirst, then right. I'm going to talk to y'all about the thirst is real. All right. Amen. All right. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, while Jesus was hanging out on that cross, yeah. seeing all things accomplished, mm -hmm. had but one more prophecy to fulfill. You see, he had fulfilled about praying in the garden. He had fulfilled prophecies of, of being whipped and holding his tongue. He had fulfilled prophecies of being betrayed. He had fulfilled everything, of even being crucified. And, and Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that there was just one more prophecy that needed to be fulfilled. All right, come on, bro. And that's why he said, I thirst. Yeah. Over in Psalms, the 69th number in the 21st verse, it says, they gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Good God, my Lord. Now Jesus, who had never cried out when he had been beaten, whipped, and scorned all night long. When he was left a bloody mess on uh, the killing floor. Jesus, who never said a moment word, when a crown of thorns was pushed down on his head. He who never made a sound as they riveted his hands and riveted his feet, stretched it wide and hung him high and never made a sound. Now, Brother Matlock cries out, I thirst. I thirst. I thirst. He didn't say nothing about none of the other stuff. It, you know, we you know, let somebody step on our bunions is wrong. And we like to say just about anything to them. Amen? Amen. But this man had been beaten all night long. Never said a mumbling word. But now cries out on the cross. I thirst. Mm. Thirst by Webster's Dictionary. Definition means a feeling or needing or wanting to drink something. Amen? Right. Yeah. When you are parched, you are thirsty for a cool drink of water. Yeah. Right. Amen? Yeah. But the Urban Dictionary says that thirst is somebody who is desperate. A thirsty person constantly looking for somebody to date. Yeah. Well, Amen? Uh, well. So when you see somebody desperate out there trying to find me somebody. Amen? Yeah. And, and I'm here to tell you that there's, there's somebody for everybody. Yeah. You just got to find that somebody for yourself. Yeah. Amen? Amen. But when you try to go from person to person to person to person to person, you thirsty. All right. Amen. Amen. You just thirsty. All right. And the thirst is real, y'all. Right. 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 Amen. Some folks so thirsty, don't matter what they got at home, 
and see the something new go walking by. They thirst. They thirst. <laughs> and here to tell you the thirst is real. Mm -hmm. And so my brothers and my sisters, whether you're looking for a name, a phone number, or that thing that I have you on your knees on Sunday morning saying, Lord have mercy, please, I'm here to tell you the thirst is real. Mm -hmm. But I'm also here to tell you that there ain't nothing wrong with being thirsty. As long as you are thirsty for the right thing. Amen. 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 Here to tell you, ain't nothing wrong with being thirsty. As long as you're thirsty for the right thing. Jesus said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. Amen. There ain't nothing wrong with being thirsty. As yeah. long as you thirsty for the right thing. Amen. Amen. And some of the best, some of the worst choices we ever made in this life, Amen. we made out of thirst. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so going forward from this point on, we got to make sure. We got to make sure. Uh, that whatever we thirsting for, that we thirsting for the right thing. That whatever choice we make, uh, that we make it because we are thirsting for the right thing. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, they said Samson thirsted after saying, slain the Philistines uh, with the jawbone of a donkey. Amen. Amen. When Jesus met the woman at the well, she was there to draw water because she was wet. Thirsty. Mm -hmm. But instead of finding natural water, Jesus gave her living water. Yeah. Oh, y'all hear me? Yeah. Come on, preacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even the torments of hell yeah. is described as thirst. Because when the rich man lifted his eyes in hell and seen the poor man over in heaven, what, what, what did he ask him? What did he ask him? He said, he said Father Abraham, uh, let Lazarus just get his finger in some water yeah. and, and, and put that drop of water right here on my tongue to, yeah. to cool my scorched tongue. The torments of hell is even described as thirst. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and I'm here to tell you that the same thing that got the rich man into hell was the same thing, uh, that he, the, which is the wrong thing, that uh, showed up in his conversation while he was in hell. Right. Amen? Yeah. All his life he was worried about riches. Uh -huh. He was worried about swagger. He was worried about the bling. He was worried about the drip. Right. Yeah. And he got to hell uh -huh. and he still worried about the drip. Because all, right. all he wanted was a drip. Right. Amen? Yeah. He didn't say anything about forgiveness. He didn't say, look, is there any way I can get out of here? He just said, just let, let me get the drip. The drip, the drip. Let me get the drip. Too many of us worried about the drip. Hey. Now, for those that don't know what the drip is, the drip is plain. The drip is looking good. The drip is nice clothes. Drip, amen. Hey. Fine automobiles and, and fancy houses and cars. Hey. Amen. Hey. Amen. Hey. Amen. Amen. But I, look, and y'all might see me out here on Sunday morning with the drip on. Hey. Amen. But I ain't worried about the drip. Amen. 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 I, I'm here to tell you, I ain't worried about the drip. Because it ain't the clothes that make the man, it's the man that make the clothes. Y'all yeah. right. talk to me. Come on. Amen. You see me tomorrow morning, I'm going to have my work clothes on. Well. But even in the work clothes, I'm still going to make the work clothes look good. Yeah, oh, y'all hear me? Because the clothes don't make the man. The man made clothes. That's why you can take a thousand dollar suit, put it on a wrapper, and he's 
still going to pull them pants down and ruin the whole look of that suit. Oh, y'all want to hear me? Folk worry about the wrong thing. Amen? If you worry about the drip in this life, you're going to be worried about the drip in the next life. And if you're going to live your life for the drip in this life, just know that you better get all the drip you can because once you lift your eyes in hell, you ain't going to get the drip no more. My brothers and my sisters, yes, the, the rich man was thirsty for the drip. Jesus cried out on that cross. He said, I thirst. Many that face the inevitability of death oftentimes in their last moments cry out with a great thirst. Whether it's a soldier dying on the battlefield, whether it's an elderly person lying on their deathbed, a person dying from an illness or disease will oftentimes in their last few days, in their last few hours, speak of a great thirst. Well, a thirst that just looks like cannot be quenched. Oh, well, y'all don't hear me? Come on, man. A lot of times that uh, in hospice, it don't even want to give water at that point. Just give them ice chips to chew on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To try to avoid uh, any accidental uh, drowning of them in their own bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is something personal to me and I, I wrestled with whether or not I should put it in this message because uh, this is very personal to me, but, uh, and, and I don't never seek to set the record straight because when folk think they know your business, amen? Well, uh, you, you spend the rest of your life trying to run from here to there, trying to straighten out a lie, amen? But I'm here to just tell you that within the last eight years or so, of Essie's life, that she would go through this routine almost every year, is she would oftentimes take ill and get sick, and then she would cleave to the bed. And after a few days, she would stop eating, and after a little while longer, she would stop taking her medicine. And, uh, but no matter what she would stop doing, she would always have a glass of water by her bedside. Even when she was well, she always had a glass of water. Amen? And it wasn't until she had gotten to the point that she couldn't drink no more, and she had gotten so weak that she couldn't fight going to the hospital anymore. Then we would oftentimes do our best to either load her up into one of our vehicles. And that runs to the gym. Or we would have to call the ambulance to come in yes, and take her to the hospital. And then uh, they would have to do the best they could to bring her back right. well, right. from the brink of death. Well, I'm here to tell you, I've seen it with my own eyes, uh -huh. that the thirst is real. Yeah. Uh, I've oftentimes seen it in the Westerns that Essie was so fond of watching. Anytime you'd see a cowboy shot down and another cowboy would be holding him as he was dying, what's the first thing they do there? Grab and pull out their canteen. Well, open it up and start to give them a drink of water. Here to tell you that the thirst is real. Yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so in the throes of death, as Jesus was dying on the cross, as the pains of hanging on the cross had set in, 
as the loss of blood had begun to take its toll, he cried out with a great thirst. Yes. And a Roman soldier went and put vinegar on the sponge wow. and raised it up to his lips. Wow. Oh, I'm here to tell you, the devil has his way of trying to sidetrack here Jesus was trying to fulfill all the prophecy that was meant in the Bible. Amen. Come on, preacher. And here this he cried out with a, a loud voice and said, I thirst. And so my brothers and my sisters. The Roman soldier ran. And instead of grabbing water, took vinegar, put it on a sponge, and raised it up to his lips. The record says twice he, he turned his head away from it, but the third time he went ahead and drank the vinegar. Well, all right. My brothers and my sisters, it's a terrible affront to ask for one thing yeah. and to be given another. Jesus often spoke of uh, the difference between saved folks and sinner folks. And even said, even a sinner man, a father, if his son asked him for one thing, his father would not give him scorpions instead. If a sinner man knows how to treat his son, then you would think that these Roman soldiers would know how to have mercy well, on a dying man. Yeah. But instead, in their haste, they fulfilled the scripture by giving him vinegar. Yeah. And rather than tasting cool water to soothe his thirst, well, he felt the sting of the vinegar. Now, he had already felt the sin and the, the lash of the whip for your sins and for mine. And now, he can't even get just a little bit of mercy here. Instead, now he has to taste the sting of the venom. Just to remind him once again of the burden that he bears for you and I. There was no respite, no respite, no, no uh, moment whereby which he could get away from the pain. Uh, there was no moment of mercy for him. And you know, my brothers and my sisters, as I said before, it's a terrible affront and an insult to ask for one thing and be given another. And as I get ready to take my seat, amen? Uh, now, I've been using these modern terms, amen, like thirst and drip, amen? Some of my old folk might not know what I'm talking about, uh, amen? But this is where I'm going to bring it back to my older crowd, amen? And say that it ain't nothing unusual to ask for one thing and be given something else. Amen? Because I'm reminded of an old blues song by Howlin' Wolf. Y'all remember Howlin' Wolf? Y'all remember how Howlin' how Wolf used to sound? Amen? And I hear Howlin' Wolf saying, I asked water and she brought me gasoline. Oh, y'all remember Y'all remember that song? Y'all remember that? I asked for water and she brought me gasoline. That's the terriblest woman that I ever seen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's a terrible thing to ask for one thing and to be given something else. So as I get ready to take my seat, my brothers and my sisters, 
verses are side by and tell you this morning that Jesus suffered this insult so that the scripture should be fulfilled. Yes, he drank from the bitter cup. Yes, he drank the vinegar so that we shall drink someday of the living water. Mm -hmm. So that we may drink and thirst no more. Right. At that great marriage feast of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Where we shall eat and hunger no more. Yes. Well now, my brothers and my sisters, as I get ready to sit down, I just stop by and say that he hung from the sixth to the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. His mouth was dry. His lips was parched. The thirst is real, my friend. Yeah, he cried out. It's finished. Came up the ghost. Said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And uh, he died to this old world that will and run like a drunken man. Yeah, he died. Yes, he did. Until the veil in the temple that uh, rent in twain. He died. Yes, he did. To the soldier standing by looked up and a eulogy when he said, Surely, 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 this must be the Son of God. He died, and I said, He died, and they took him down, laid him in a borrowed tomb, laid there three long days. Thank you. 
mercy, my friend. Save mercy for the word of God. Save mercy for righteousness. Save mercy for justice. Save mercy for the goodwill of your fellow man. Yes, yes. Save mercy for the will of God. And after a while, in the by and by, when we get to heaven and drink from those living waters, we want. Burn like the love of Jesus. Burn. 